today we are going to talk about a bacteria a bacteria which was never intended to infect human beings but due to industrialization of the food product this bacteria was somehow introduced into our food chain we are going to talk about siga toxic producing escherichia coli also known as stec or the vero toxic producing escherichia coli this bacteria is normally present in the guts of the domestic animal like that of the cow and there it act as a commensal which means that this domestic animal can tolerate this bacteria and it causes no harm in this domestic animal but when it infect human beings the mortality is very high because it causes a deadly syndrome known as hemolytic uremic syndrome this hemolytic uremic syndrome is characterized by a triad of laboratory finding it is not a clinical finding but it is a triad of laboratory finding at first let us discuss what is this triad of laboratory finding then we will discuss what are the other possible causes which can lead to hemolytic uremic syndrome or hus not only this siga toxic producing escherichia coli can cause hus but there are so many other infection which can also lead to hus that is hemolytic uremic syndrome so what is this triad of symptoms occurring in hemolytic uremic syndrome as the name suggests there is something hemolysis going on in the patient of hus so there is hemolysis hemolysis of rbcs leading to anemia there is also destruction of the platelet which lead to thrombocytopenia and the third part of this triad of symptoms is the uremic part the hemolytic uremic the uremic part and this uremic part is characterized by acute renal failure so these are the triad of symptoms in a patient of hemolytic uremic syndrome now as i told you there are many other conditions which can lead to hemolytic uremic syndrome the first one which i told you is the the verotoxic producing escherichia coli the other infection which can lead to hemolytic uremic syndrome or that the triad of laboratory finding is that the siga toxic producing sigella dysentery this can also produce a prodrome stage of diarrhea and later on the child or the infected individual develops this triad of laboratory manifestation that is hemolytic uremic syndrome the neuramidase producing strep pneumonia this bacteria causes pneumonia in an individual and this pneumonia can sometimes complicate to that of hemolytic uremic syndrome and specifically the neuraminidase group of streptococcus pneumonia or the streptococcus bacteria which produces an enzyme that is neuraminidase can lead to hemolytic uremic syndrome but the most common cause is still remains the first two that is the escherichia coli and the sigella in the developing country and both these bacteria causes a initial prodromal stage of diarrhea and after that the initial stage of diarrhea there is the appearance of this laboratory manifestation of hemolytic uremic syndrome the, these are the infection induced hemolytic uremic syndrome other than the infection induced hemolytic uremic syndrome this hus can be caused by some genetic mutation of the certain certain complement which is like that of the complement h the complement i and the complement b this complement h i and b can the deficiency of this complement can lead to hemolytic uremic syndrome the pathogenesis of how this infection induced and the genetic induced hemolytic uremic syndrome we will discuss later during the course of this video lecture but at first you understand that the hemolytic uremic syndrome can be either due to infection that like that of the escherichia coli the sigella and sometimes the untreated hiv infection can also produce hemolytic uremic syndrome 
and the genetic cause can be deficiency of the complement like that of H, I and B and the von Willebrand factor deficiency can also lead to hemolytic remix syndrome. This von Willebrand cleaving factor protease deficiency which is coded by gene that is ADAMTS113 gene if this deficiency occur in individual this can also produce HUS. Other than the infection induced and the genetic mutations which produces HUS there are certain systemic disease associated with HUS like that of the multi-systemic disease famously known as systemic lupus erythromatosis. This can also complicate or can produce hemolytic uremic syndrome. The APLA syndrome or the antiphospholipid antibody syndrome can also produce HUS. Certain medications as as associated with this HUS are the cyclosporine, tacrolimbus and the quinine. These medications can sometimes produce hemolytic uremic syndrome. Now let us understand the pathogenesis of all these hemolytic uremic syndrome. As I told you that the majority of HUS is caused by the E. coli and the Seagull. So let us first understand the pathogenesis of HUS due to E. coli and Seagull. Seagull produces a toxin known as Cigatoxin. Whereas this E. coli is produced, E. coli which produces a toxin is also similar in structure to that of Ciga toxin. So we call this type of toxin as a Ciga like toxin, as it is similar or likely same that of Ciga toxin. So this is Ciga like toxin. The other name of Ciga like toxin is the Vero toxin. So E. coli or the strain of E. coli which produces seagull like toxin are known as STEC as I told you earlier STEC. So this is verotoxin producing E. coli or seagull like toxin producing E. coli. Both these toxin are similar in structure and this toxin leads to endothelial damage of the blood vessel. The endothelium or the inner lining of the blood vessel is damaged. endothelial damage this endothelium damage exposes the underlying collagen when the endothelial damage occurs the underlying collagen is exposed and as you know when the underlying collagen is exposed it leads to activation of the coagulation pathway and once the coagulation pathway is activated it leads to platelet aggregation and platelet aggregation occurs resulting in thrombosis so this endothelial damage will activate the cascade of coagulation pathway which in turn will cause, cause platelet aggregations and platelet aggregation will cause thrombosis and once thrombosis of the blood vessel occurs it leads to narrowing of the lumen of this blood vessel and when the blood passes through this narrowed lumen the rbc's which passes through this narrowed lumen get damaged or which it result in hemolysis due to narrowing of the lumen of this blood vessel which in turn will lead to anemia so this is the mechanism of anemia in hemolytic uremic syndrome and as this hemolysis is occurring at the microvasculature level we call this type of anemia as a microangiopathic hemolytic anemia so microangiopathic hemolytic anemia is seen in hemolytic uremic syndrome and as there is activation of the platelet and aggregation of the platelet all the platelet are used are being used to make the thrombus and all the platelet are used up now the systemic platelet count will reduce and this will result in thrombocytopenia thrombocytopenia so this is the mechanism of thrombocytopenia in hemolytic uremic syndrome and as there is thrombosis of the renal vasculature and the glomerulus of the kidney or the nephron now this thrombosis will reduce the GFR of the kidney and when the GFR of the kidney is reduced there is less filtration through the kidney and accumulation of nitrogenous waste product in the circulation due to its less excretion through the urine and now with this it will lead to acute renal 
renal failure. So thrombosis, causing thrombosis of the uh, glomerulus and the renal vasculature will activate a cascade of thrombosis in the renal vasculature which in turn will reduce the GFR and the excretion of the nitrogenous waste product which in turn will lead to accumulation of the nitrogenous waste product in the blood and will result in uremia. So this is the uremic part of hemolytic uremic syndrome which will result in acute renal failure. So this is the mechanism of acute renal failure in hemolytic uremic syndrome. So E. coli and cigar, no, cigella, this produces a toxin which is similar. One is called cigar toxin, the other is called cigar like toxin. Both these toxins are similar in structure and causes endothelial damage. So the story is this, the endothelium damage occurs and this endothelial damage will activate a cascade of coagulation. And once the cascade of coagulation is activated, it will lead to platelet aggregation. And platelet aggregation causes thrombosis of this now blood vessel and this thrombosis will lead to narrowing of the blood vessel and when RBC will pass through this narrowed blood vessel it will get hemolyzed and as there is thrombosis there is consumption of the platelet and as there is consumption of the platelet it will lead to thrombocytopenia and as when the renal vasculature is thrombosed it will lead to reduced GFR and reduced GFR will cause acute renal failure. So E. coli and Sigella produce a hemolytic uremic syndrome in this way. So this is the pathogenesis of hemolytic uremic syndrome caused by E. coli and the strep pneumonia producing the strep pneumonia strep pneumonia strep pneumonia which has produced neura minides the mechanism of hemolytic uremic syndrome in this case is somewhat different than the E. coli and the Sigella. This neuraminidase clips the sialic acid, sialic acid residue of the endothelium, the RBCs and the platelet. And when this Sialic acid residue is cleaved, there is exposure of an antigen known as cryptin Thompson antigen. All things will come into perspective when you know that this cryptin Thompson antigen is normally not exposed to our immune system. So the immune system cannot recognize it as a self antigen or a foreign antigen. And when that is strep pneumonia producing neuraminidase clip the sialic acid residue of this endothelium RBC and platelet, it exposes the cryptin Thompson antigen. And now our own immune system recognized the cryptin Thompson antigen antigen as a foreign antigen and it will act by producing an endogenous immunoglobulin which the immunoglobulin will now go and destroy the cryptin Thompson antigen leading to destruction of the endothelium, the RBCs and the platelet. The RBC destruction will lead to hemolysis, the platelet destruction will lead to thrombocytopenia and endothelial damage will lead to activation of cascade of coagulation pathway resulting in thrombosis of the renal vasculature which in turn will cause hemolysis. So the initial part of the pathogen in strep pneumonia is different but the later part is similar to that of the E. coli and the Sigella producing toxin. Initial part which is different is the exposure of the cryptin Thompson antigen in which the bodies, our own bodies, immunoglobulin will go and destroy this cryptin Thompson antigen which will lead to destruction of entire cell that is the RBC, the platelet and the endothelial cell. And now the all the pathophysiological manifestation will be similar to that of the E. coli and the Sigella. So this is the mechanism how the strep pneumonia, the neuraminidase producing strep pneumonia can cause hemolytic uremic syndrome in a patient. Now let us discuss about the clinical feature of hemolytic uremic.